I hereby introduce to you, Mr. Michael Veazey. Today's show is brought to you by Amazing FBA's mentoring program. So I'm kind of sponsoring my own show. I just wanted to briefly tell you about the mentoring program because it's about to go away at its current price point and in its current form. The, the mentoring program is there very simply to get you launched, like pretty much everything I do for the more you know early days sellers, apart from the 10K Collective, which is obviously for people doing very, very well and ambitious to scale. Everything else I do is really geared to helping you get launched with your first private label product within probably six months, maybe nine months if you're really busy and have other projects, uh, projects on the go. So if you want to work with me for £300 a month, for two 90-minute sessions plus email support. That is the current offer. I'm going to take one more person on, maximum two, if the the other candidate is really, really special and looks like a really great person is going to succeed. Either that or by the end of June, one of those, whichever comes first, then after that, I'm going to yank the mentoring program at that price point. And when it goes back up, it's going to be part of a bigger, more powerful package, including an online course, which I'm very excited about. And it's going to be at least £500 a month, probably more, because I'm putting a higher value on my time because I realize opportunity cost is a real cost. And hopefully you realize that as well. So if you value your time, there are three things you need to have to even apply for mentoring. You need at least £5,000 in inventory money. That's not um, to cover your your training costs with me. That's additional, but just for inventory, 20 hours a week to um, devote to building, building a business and six months of your time to devote to it as well. Otherwise, I think you're just wasting your time and I won't take you on because I don't want to take your money for the sake of it. I want to take your money only in, in exchange for great value and you creating your business, finally getting off the ground. So amazingfba.com forward slash mentoring if that interests you. Um, otherwise, on with the show. Thanks for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Today, I have Mike Zagari of PPC Entourage on the line. PPC Entourage is a PPC tool that helps Amazon sellers to scale their PPC and save money on their PPC ad spend. So obviously, we're going to dig deep into PPC, but also off Amazon traffic as well. So very exciting because it's always an important topic. Mike, welcome to the show. Awesome, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome, guys. Hey, guys. Thanks very much for coming on. So, Mike, tell us a little bit about your background before you hit the Amazon thing. Right. So I am a recovering physical therapist, meaning I have not treated a patient in about two and a half years. I started a PT business back when I was about 25 years old and um, it kind of failed miserably. We were not doing very well. And I was working with a coach who told me, hey, you are spinning your wheels in physical therapy. There's got to be another answer. And then a couple of days later, I came across Amazon FBA and that was in 2015. So we dialed that in and in 2016, we started to um, really scale our business using Amazon-sponsored products. And that was a huge uh, hit for us because we were able to scale our business. And then we realized that was sort of a pain in the Excel spreadsheets and downloading things and, and working on all that. So we created a software called PPC Entourage and the rest is history. We've been working on that and our, our uh, Amazon FBA business. Yeah, interesting uh, background that you have there. And it's interesting that it was a coach that kind of told you, that called you on, you know, the fact that you were take, doing a lot of activity, but as you put it, spinning your wheels, but not actually moving forward with what you really wanted. And um, yeah, I, I recently hired a coach for the same reason that it, it can be very, not so much spinning wheels, but sometimes you can't see things when you're too close, right? So it's very helpful to have somebody, an outside view to, to help you see what you don't want to see, but what you need to see, right? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, he was a huge help. Um, it was he's a mindset coach, but just you know realized I was kind of focusing on stuff that just wasn't producing, and uh, it can't thank him enough. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense. So it's a very interesting start, actually. So um, obviously, you got started with Amazon, and uh, you discovered that PPC was uh, an important pain area. And yeah, for sure. I mean, downloading spreadsheets. I, I try and you know, because obviously, I, I coach Amazon sellers, and whenever a spreadsheet is involved, I say to people, look, please don't plunge into a spreadsheet unless you really have to, because it takes so much brain power, and it, for some reason, it turns your brain to mush analyzing spreadsheets. So I, I hear what you're saying. So we're going to dig into a bit more about what PPC Entourage. Um, did before, um, you know, we'll, we'll look at that later. So the first question is then, what would you suggest? So if somebody's brand new to Amazon, they've just got their first product launch and uh, say their first private label product or something that isn't just arbitrage, it's worth running adverts. What is the very first thing or first couple of things you would say to that person? Right. So the first thing I would say is dive into structure of campaigns and know exactly how to set up a PPC campaign. 
we always do an automatic campaign, but we make sure that we don't uh, leave that running indefinitely. We make sure that we optimize that at least every couple of weeks. So start off with a good automatic campaign, and that'll give you visibility um, into what's selling, into the keywords that are selling. Um, those search terms will show up on your search term report. You can dive deep into your search term report. So structure is really critical and key. Now, I started off and didn't have structure in place, and it took me a while to get my structure back in place. But you know, a- after all the experience I have with PPC, I can see that structure is number one. And even before that, guys, dial in your listing. There's so many opportunities right now with uh, enhanced brand content to really dial in your listing and improve your conversions. And on this podcast, we're going to be talking about how to drive traffic to your listing. But if it's not dialed in, then you're really going to be losing out. So if you have one product, I would say focus in on spending the money first and foremost to dial in that listing and then start your PPC, dig into the search term report and really see what's connecting with your your target audience. And not only uh, will that help your PPC, but it'll help you find some other products to sell to that audience. And then you can start to build up product lines. So I'll start with that. I know I gave you a lot, Mike, but uh, that's where I would start. Yeah, well, that, but that's, it's good stuff. So I mean, just to sort of feedback. So basically dial in the listing first, which makes a lot of sense. And as you say, spend the money on that. I mean, I would say number one thing, I don't know if you'd agree here, is really fantastic photography. And then the second thing is obviously get the keywords right. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, fantastic photography is the most important thing, in my opinion. And, and then also dialing your keywords and looking at what are the keywords that are going to have the most impact and get the most amount of eyeballs that are the most relevant to what you're selling and start with that. You know, a lot of people are working at looking at keyword density nowadays and working at getting those keywords in enough times in your listing. There's ways to do that as well. You can model after your top competitors and look at how many times they have those keywords in your listing. But it's really not that hard. Work at amazing images getting those proper keywords in there. There's a lot of tools that can help you do that. And then having great copy that really sells your product, just the fundamentals guys, and then start to dial up your PPC presence. That makes a lot of sense, but I'm glad that you flagged that up at the beginning because really that is the connection, isn't it, between the the PPC system and your listing that Matt is not just chucking money at ads and and praying, I guess, you know, the spray and pray approaches is generally a bad idea. So, okay, fantastic race already. Now let's deal, let's go back to that word structure. So you said structure is the key. So what kind of, okay, you said run an auto listing or auto campaign rather and see what search terms are actually resonating with the audience. But tell us more about structure. Sure. So you're going to have a manual campaign that you can set up. And the key is to find the relevant keywords and search terms to put into your campaigns and then test them out in different match types. So we test out in broad and phrase match type, and then we put the ones that we really know are dialed in and connected into an exact match type. Um, we have a, what we call the PPC Entourage Blueprint that we follow, and that's all free if you go to our site. But basically, the structure is you want to find the most relevant keywords. Now, back in 2016, we used to tell you to dump in as many as possible. That is not the case anymore. It no longer works that way, guys. Um, in fact, that'll actually harm your performance if you go ahead and do that. Because Amazon does look at campaign metrics like CTR percentage and conversion rate percentage. But if you start really testing really, really wide, then that's going to start to impact your overall campaign performance, which Amazon does not like. So the key is to have sound keyword analysis from the very beginning, set it up in different match types, get the most relevant keywords in there, be somewhat aggressive with your bidding, and then dig into the search term reports to fully figure out what's connecting with your audience. Okay. So just to feedback a bit. So um, relevance is now much more important than it used to be. And yeah, I mean, I guess Amazon's growing up, right? It's a bit like Google used to be very, very gameable in lots of crude ways. And now really that you, you can't get past the old message to market match thing, right? As Dan Kennedy coined probably back in the nineties now, which feels like, um, you know, decades and internet years, right? So uh, I guess that makes a lot of sense why Amazon is doing that. So tell us a little bit more on um, CTR is clip through rate just to clarify for those who are new, tell us a bit more about why that matters. What's that about? Right. So Amazon will look at the CTR, the click-through rate percentage to determine whether or not your campaign should be shown over other campaigns that are out there, your competitors' campaigns. So if it's kind of an indicator of relevancy. If uh, you have a high CTR percentage, then it's really relevant to the target audience, the person that's actually shopping for what, what you're putting up there. So it's a really good indicator of relevance, of that, the, that it's a good connection to your audience and Amazon will reward you for that. 
But if you start to go really broad, like back in the day, I used to do dog, I, I sell cat products, but I used to advertise on dog product listings for PPC just to get mass exposure to my cat brand. And uh, that's really, really broad. And our relevance was like really low. So that kind of thing doesn't really work quite as well as it used to and is not, uh, not a good thing to do anymore. Okay. It's interesting. Now, I was talking this morning with uh, somebody who's not got a product yet, but a, a a client who is wanting to uh, develop a product in a sort of quasi-medical area. I'm not going to go any further with that usual Amazon secrecy thing, but he uh, was wanting to go as broad as possible and say, I want it to be for men and women and old and young and for sports. And I, and I said, look, the whole point of this stuff is that you need to dial in. So you get the message marking Matt. So actually you need to cut yourself off from men and just go for women. You need to cut yourself off from older women and just go for young women and cut yourself off from, you know, general people and go just for gym users or whatever it is. So it's interesting to hear that Amazon's really also rewarding that kind of behavior. So again, to me, that just makes a lot of sense. You're going to know further thoughts on that in terms of before we even hit Amazon ads, the approach to what market you choose. Right. So there's so many people on Amazon, even, uh, I mean, 1.4 billion visits in, in May of 2018, one month alone. So there's a lot of people out there searching. And if you start to go really broad, you may eat up your ad spend right away, right? Cause, because if things are getting a little bit more competitive. We have to start to weed out what is not working and be really diligent on what is working and target that. And like I said, the more um, your, your campaign metrics are favorable in Amazon's eyes, the less you may spend on your average cost per click, which is huge, right? If you start going really super broad and Amazon doesn't deem you as relevant, it's kind of like ad rank for Google. You're going to end up paying a little bit more than your competitors would, which adds up over time. So you're going after really wide things and it could cost you a lot of money on your uh, campaigns overall. So relevance obviously is super important at this point. Excellent. So a lot of people talk about a discovery campaign. Is, is that the thing that you're talking about with your Amazon auto campaign there? Yeah, an auto campaign can be a discovery campaign, but there also could be a re- uh, manual campaign that's a discovery campaign. So okay. once again, uh, you, can, you can go really you know, targeted on those keywords and use them as a broad phrase and a phrase match and still get a wide scope of related search terms and keywords from the search term report because Amazon will match you up appropriately. So yeah, we still do a discovery campaign, but rather than thousands of keywords, it's like maybe 10 or 20 at a time. And then we'll slowly add to those over time. And we have a whole system in place to expand and get more reach, but without being too greedy and trying to take over the entire Amazon platform with our ads. Excellent. All right. So tell us a little bit more about that system. So it sounds like testing 10 to 20 keywords at a time, which actually sounds like best Google practice from about 10 years ago, actually. Funny, it sounds like the advice you got in the four hour work week from Tim Ferriss, what, 2007 with Google ads. So it sounds like things are coming full circle with Amazon ads in a way. Um, what are the, what are the best practices then? Um, obviously it'd be great if people can get your blueprint and uh, maybe we can offer that as well. I know we're going to have a special landing page, amazingfba.com forward slash entourage, E N. T-O-U-R-A-G-E for those who are new to Entourage. But tell us a bit more what the next stage is then. So I've got, say, 10 keywords on broad and phrase match on a manual campaign. I've got an auto campaign to find what keywords that the customers connect with or the searchers connect with. What's the next stage after that? Right. So there's a lot of tools that can help you out with that, that are, now have a lot of relevancy scores, which is really super cool. The one that we're using is Helium 10. We're also using Viral Launches tool to find those keywords to test out. And then you can find the best 10 or 20 and then, and then let the connections do the work and then check out the search term report. After a couple of weeks, you're going to have enough data to start to realize what's connecting to your audience and what's not. That's when you want to start doing, to do the um, optimizations for those campaigns. So you can do negative, exact negative phrases to really start to dial in and uh, get rid of some of the unnecessary ad spend. But you can also find out that what keywords and search terms have connected to the search terms you placed in there before in the search term report. Meaning people are going to search for things and they're going to connect to the keywords in your campaign. Those new search terms that people are looking for could be brand new and you can use that and put them into new campaigns. And we do that, we, we call it the ACOS scraping campaign, where we find the search terms, we dig into the search term report, and we find the search terms that have two or more orders, and then we aggressively bid on those search terms because they've already made a sale for us. We know there's a connection there, 
and we want to make sure that we take advantage of those connections. We want to make sure that we bid aggressively on those. We want to make sure that, um, you know, a lot of times those are longer tail search terms that we don't, uh, our competitors aren't going after. So it leads to a lot of opportunities uh, after a couple of weeks, we'll start to, and we get about 100 or 200 of these search terms every single time we check. It's wild how many ways there are to say the same thing. Yeah, it's true. I mean, there are certain things, there are certain areas, I guess, that are more obvious, but some things, particularly um, stuff that isn't obvious, you might say thingamajig for cat or something. That's probably a very British word, but uh, what do you call it? I mean, people do type in the most random stuff when you look at the search term <laughs> yeah. reports. So I'd agree with that. Um, so just to reflect back then, so really uh, we've gone into, apart from negative exact match, which is getting rid of unnecessary spend, really we're using the search term report. So tell me a bit more about the best way to handle the search term report, because obviously it can be a very intimidating thing when it comes to a downloadable spreadsheet. But equally, I know that in the last few months, Amazon's online display in Seller Central backend has given you a, a lot of data that it used to give only in the search term report, but in a more handleable form. So I guess my first question is, would you, for a new person, advise going into the spreadsheet or would you stick with the Seller Central version? And if so, how would you use that? Right. So the Seller Central version will give you keyword information. So you can really dial in some keywords, which is different than search terms. So it's really critical to know the difference between keywords and search terms. Keywords are what you're putting into campaigns to advertise your product for. And search terms are what customers are actually putting into Amazon that, that when they go and purchase your product, that's the search term they use inside of Amazon. So Amazon will not display that inside of Seller Central, but they will give you a report for that. It's really important to um, you know, bid and adjust your bids on, key, on a keyword level, but also dig into the search term report to see what exactly is connecting with your audience. You can download that. It's, it's really you know, easy to do. Put it into an Excel spreadsheet, and then you can... Um, sort of look at it by ACOS or the number of clicks or the number of orders or the number of, of impressions and start to see which search terms are connecting to your audience. Uh, you know, inside of Entourage, you can do that at a click of a button. You can put in a, dark, a target ACOS of, let's say, 30%. And then all of the search terms that have connected to your audience will show up automatically. And then you can toggle by impressions, which we like to do, um, toggle by orders and look at the ones that have multiple orders, which are super important, right? Because those are the ones that are probably the best ones to advertise for, the ones that have multiple orders. So um, yeah, that's how we, we handle the search term report versus keyword information that's on Seller Central. And by yeah, the way, Seller Central has gotten a lot better for sure. Yeah, that's true. But I think you've just put a, a very, very important point. And I would say a couple of things, especially for people who are fairly new, having tried to coach a lot of new people in this stuff over the last couple of years. I mean, first of all, I would start with Seller Central because it's simpler, cleaner, easier to absorb mentally. But the second thing is uh, I really want to underline what you just said about the difference between keywords and search terms. I think that's really, really important. And uh, the fact that keywords are basically what we bid on and search terms are what people put in to the system. And the connection between the two is, is I guess, about the broad phrase and exact match, right? And then, uh, I think you just put your finger on a very important difference. What do we need to be aware of in that difference most particularly? Well, just be aware that keywords and search terms can be the same thing. So if you put a keyword into a campaign as an exact match type, then it's only going to uh, connect you to the, that exact word as a search term. So in that, it, it's a great way to really hyper-focus on what's connecting to your audience as an exact match type. We like to really sometimes even have a single campaign as an exact match type because we're saying to Amazon, we love this keyword. We want when somebody's searching for it as a search term, we want that connection as an exact match type. 100% of the times, we want to scale that as many times as possible. So it's really important to know the broad phrase and exact match types because then you can start to say, oh, what are my targets here? Uh, do I want a late lightning focus on a particular keyword and search term? Okay, right. So let me make that a, uh, an exact match type. Is uh, um, you know Phrase match works really well as well. So do I want to put it in as a phrase match, which means I um, am guaranteed, guaranteeing that that particular uh, phrase will be in some way, shape, or form in the customer search term. For example, if I use, a, a, let's say, a grill brush, and I put that in as a phrase match, it has to be in the search term that somebody searches for on Amazon in some way, shape, or form, like long grill brush or metallic grill brush. So that's really powerful as well. And then broad match gives you a little bit more exposure to a variety of, of different search terms, but not quite as broad as it used to be. Like, for example, I used to put in search terms for my cat products and on cigarette 
the search terms would show up like back in 2015. There was no connection whatsoever. So Amazon's gotten a lot better at making that connection, um, you know, pretty relevant, but you still will get a more, much more broad scope of search terms if you put it in as a broad match type as compared to an exact match type. You will simply just get the search term that you, and the keyword that you put in. Yeah, makes sense. So tell me a little bit more about the campaign structure thing. So that was implied. You talked about structure earlier and the importance of that. And I know from experience how, how true that can be. So uh, some people believe in having a separate campaign uh, per type match type, for example, but for the same product. Um, some people have it all in one campaign, but they use um, ad work, the, uh, different ad groups for one for exact match, one for phrase, one for et cetera. There are lots of options. So what's your basic approach when you're starting off? Right. So there's many good options and there's, there's different uh, views on this. Um, the one thing I want to say before structure is if you have multiple products, head on over to your uh, back end and check out your conversion percentage for all of your products and look at the ones that have really high conversion percentages. That's where we tend to drive the most traffic. You know, a lot of people ask, do I send it to all the variations? Do I send it to this product, that product? Well, let the, um, the, the data actually show you the way, right? So if you have seven variations and only two have really high conversion percentages, then use that as, as a guidance and everything else will trickle down into your other variations um, you know, smoothly. That's, that's how we do it. So um, in the structure, like I said, we have an auto campaign and then we have a manual campaign. We typically have um, multiple ad groups within a research campaign, but we separate it by broad and phrase match in those ad groups with the same keywords that we find. Once again, relevant keywords are what we're using to get that exposure. And then we let that sit, sit for a couple of, of uh, weeks, right, with a, a fairly aggressive bid price. And by the way, the phrase bid price is a little higher than the, um, the broad bid price. And then once that information comes in, we will then take that information on the ones, the, the, the search terms that we've connected with our audience that we've made sales on, we will break that out into a separate campaign, actually two other campaigns. One's the ACO scraping campaign, which is a phrase match campaign, a broad and a phrase match campaign. And the, the last one is uh, what we call the exact match campaign, which is all of the winners that we know are connecting, we will put them into an exact match campaign. All right. So let me just reflect this back and make sure I've got this down because we have to get this across in the show notes. As ever, guys, we will have detailed show notes. Just go to amazingfba.com forward slash Mike Z or Mike Z, depending on which continent you're in, M-I-K-E-Z or M-I-K-E-Z. Um, so just to check that we're going to get this right. Also campaign to start with, manual campaign. You're going to have multiple ad groups within the manual campaign um, that are separated by broad and phrase match. So you have a different, you have basically one broad match ad group and then one phrase match ad group. Is that right within this overall campaign? Yes. Okay, fantastic. And then you're going to bid quite aggressively. As you say, phrase uh, matches get slightly higher bids than broad matches. Makes sense because they're more likely to be relevant, I guess. And then you let it sit for two weeks. And then the search terms that connect with the audience, you break it out into two campaigns. One is if they've got a good lowish ACOS, and the other one is the exact match campaign for stuff that has actually made sales. Is that right? Yeah, so it's uh, the, the only difference between the two, the ACOS scraping is, so we will put any, any keyword or search term that has two or more orders from the search term report goes into that ACOS scraping campaign. Okay. Uh, so then the other campaign, the exact match campaign, are the very best keywords, the very best search terms that have performed the best. Then we break them out with a slightly higher bid, and we tell Amazon, hey, these words are the best of the best. We want to uncap our bid, and we want to make sure that we get as much exposure to these keywords as possible, right? So if you look at the whole spectrum, we're starting off with an auto and a research campaign and we're graduating them to the ACOS scraping campaign based on two or more orders. And then the fourth campaign is saying, wow, this, this keyword is the best. I want to uncap my bids and just say, you know, and break loose and say, Amazon, send me the traffic. Okay, great. So then basically that brings us to another may, very important question, which is, what the purpose is of ads, which may sound like a stupid thing for people they, when they're first starting out. It's like, well, they're just going to make sales. But are we aiming to gain market share and, and shove the competition out of the way and be more visible in a competition for particular keywords? Or are we at this stage trying to make a profit? On, and how far down the line are we pushing the profit-taking moment? 
Right. So it really depends on what your goal is um, right away. So if you're starting off and you have a new product and you have no reviews and stuff like that, or maybe you have one or two reviews, uh, by the way, I'm very aggressive about that. If I have a new product, I will start PPC at a loss. But the point is I will start PPC fairly aggressively. Um, you don't have to blow through all of your money all at once. You can set it at a reasonable ad spend for the first two weeks and then dive into the report and then sort of go from there. But the point is, you want to get that flywheel going because once you get your ads out there and you start to make sales, you start to get some more visibility uh, organically on Amazon because you start to maybe get more reviews, you start to get sales related to keywords, so those start to show up in, in various ways. And we have found that the more aggressive we are through PPC, the more organic sales we make. Right? Because it just gets everything moving a heck of a lot faster. And we're at the point now where you almost have to be in PPC in order to be relevant on Amazon's whole system. Because otherwise, it's going to be very challenging to get those organic sales. We try to do it at, uh, let me just put that in, this in perspective, 30% of our sales come from PPC and 70% come from organic. Now, we break even on our PPC, but we make a lot of profit on our organic sales. Now, that's 70% of our sales, and we run a 4 to $5 million a year uh, business. So we're willing to take that um, break-even, almost break-even proposition. There's a little bit of profit on PPC. We're like 35% ACoS. We're willing to take that just because we know that that's going to give us organic exposure. We know that that's going to get more uh, visibility to our brand. People may come back and buy our other products. We know that our listings are optimized to upsell people on other products that we sell. And uh, that is our general strategy. However, if you're just starting out, you may want to make that a little bit higher ACOS, like 50 or 60%, just to get the, the, the wheel going um, in your direction. So you start to get the re reviews and start to get those keywords uh, ranked on Amazon. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, so uh, what I think a lot of the time this stuff is that people try and look for one single answer that applies at all stages of their own business and at all different levels of business as well. And I think what I'm getting from you uh, as, as often comes across from a lot of people that really know they're doing is that you have uh, an overall business strategy, which in your case includes very highly optimized listings and upselling, which means that the average, um, the lifetime customer value uh, per transaction is going to be higher than it will without, right? So then reverse engineering for that bigger picture, then you can look at, okay, what stages am I at? So you have a discovery stage, then you have an, a stage where you, you bid quite aggressively, if I'm understanding, just to check this back with you really, be a bit aggressively, but only on the stuff that has proven itself to actually give you orders. Is that about right? That's right. And we also have a budget for branding. You know, we're not a huge mega company at this point, but we, we do have a budget for headline search ads and branding because we find that the combination of headline search ads, good visibility on PPC with uh, the sponsored product ads, and then organic is a winning combination. Okay. So tell us more about head, headline search ads. I know they're more vi widely available now. They used to be only available for the, the vendor people, and now they've been on Seller Central for a while. How... Uh, how helpful, how essential are they? What, how does that fit into the picture? It's essential as long as you don't get a little lazy with it. And I, I feel like some sellers do get a little lazy, like they'll set it and then completely forget it. And they won't even really, really work on good headlines or good images and they'll just throw it up there uh, and then maybe get a little discouraged. The thing with headline search ads is there's so many different variables. You have uh, the opportunity to uh, change your, your main image and your titles and also where you're sending people. Is it a list page or is it a branding page? And what are the goals of that? Do you want to send people to a branding page in preparation for the holidays and get them ready to purchase your products? Or do you want to send them to a targeted list page because it's a targeted keyword that you're going after with a targeted headline? So there's all these different options, which I think causes a little bit um, analysis, paral paralysis analysis, or analysis paralysis. Well, I never know either, yeah. yeah. One of those two. Yeah. yeah. Can you just break that down right really sort of slow speed then for those of us who are fairly new to it? And I would include myself. I've never really bothered with headline ads because I just thought it was another complication and probably very lazily I, I just avoided it. So <laughs> break it down nice and slowly for, for those who are fairly new to it, which I admit would be include me, probably rather to my shame. Right. So I would keep it really simple. The first thing I would do is look at your headline and ask yourself, is this a good headline? And if not, contact your local copywriter who knows how to write. I write like a third grader. So if I was, <laughs> if I was to do that, it would be a complete mess. 
So my copywriter comes out with crafty headlines. Uh, and we actually have a headline swipe file tool on our site on Entourage, which Ooh. is really good headlines that you could just fill in your product's information with. And we've up to 50 different headlines. So that's the first you know, thing that you can do to set yourself apart because a lot of sellers don't even do that. Um, and then target the keywords that are really relevant to your audience. Once again, that should be in your headline. So if you know that you're selling a grill brush the, you know, and that's the number one keyword and that's what you're going after, grill brush, that exact word, that exact phrase should be inside of your headline. Uh, keep it targeted. And then use an image that really sells your product that's easy to see that isn't just a brand logo or isn't just your product you know, with a white background. You want a really good image that sells your product. And then also think about it from an, um, an Amazon buyer's per perspective. If they're clicking on your headline search ad, it's probably best to send them to a list page because that's what they're used to. So we're finding a little bit better success with a list page, especially if your Amazon storefront, it doesn't wow them, right? Because they go to the storefront and if it's mediocre, then it's probably not gonna do you any, uh, uh, it do you, it's gonna do you a disservice rather. But if, it, if it's good, you can try to split test the two. But you can be really safe by sending them to a list page with your top three products because they know that list page. They've seen it before, it's relevant to them. So that's a, a couple of different strategies and tools that you can use to, to take back with you. Brilliant. Thank you. That's extremely actionable stuff. So you, you basically make sure your headline is great. And I hear what you're saying about a good copywriter. And there was a guy in the, in the 10K Collective recently who uh, brought a listing that they just changed the bullet points and that's all they changed. And they split tested it and they got an increase in 30% conversion rate to 38% just based on him giving it to his copywriter, same keywords, just rewritten, and which blew my mind because I had no idea it would be that powerful. So I absolutely hear what you're saying about the importance of good copywriting. It's so easy to, to think it doesn't matter, actually. Yeah, I fall into that trap periodically and get obsessed with images, and then actually I'm reminded. Um, Image-wise, just tell us a little bit more about that. You said make sure it's easy to see, not just your logo. Okay, cool, but not just your image on a white background. Tell me a bit more about that then. What, what's the best practice for images? Right, so you have the option that, that it's, well, there's gonna be three products um, to the right of the headline, but the main image is what I'm talking about. Right? Okay. If you're gonna have uh, three products with white backgrounds to the right of the headline, don't yeah. just put another image with a white background yeah. to the left of the headline. You wanna yeah. make sure it's a product in use that really shows your product and, and it shows some of the benefits, shows people happy using it, um, really yeah. accurately displays what it's like to be an owner of that product. And then you're more, they're more likely to click on it. But just keep in mind that I've found that headline search ads are, are going to be slightly higher in ACOS. The return isn't always there. But the uh, return is really that it's sort of like the first thing that people see when they get to an Amazon list page. They probably notice it's an ad. But if they see your, your product down below by sponsored products and also by the organic, they're more likely to click on it there if they've seen you up a little bit higher. It's kind of like just owning the Amazon real estate landscape versus just hoping that they, you know, maybe click on your product as they get down below, like have a powerful message then serve an ad, then hopefully they'll click on your organic and you won't have to pay Amazon any money because they're pretty rich to begin with. Yeah, that's true. And they make a lot of money from Amazon ads. But nevertheless, what you just said it mirrors what um, Joe, Joe Jakes from the 10K Collective, who's probably doing similar, well, slightly higher numbers, it's sort of a few million a year anyway, I think. And you know, he's a big seller. And he's, he was on the podcast a while ago talking about various things, including the fact that he's really very much into dominating the space as well. So any opportunity to build the brand, uh, as long as, as you say, you, you're conscious of what you're spending your money on. You're building a brand. It won't necessarily pay off immediately. But if you look at the overall picture, and I guess the simplest metric I know of, and, and I'd be very interested to get your thoughts on metrics, really, for, for PPC, because there's so many that fly around. But instead of ACOS so much, he looks at the advertising to sales ratio, the total ad spend in a given period, divided by the total sales for that um, ASIN or set of products. And that's the main thing that most people in the 10K Collective and the, and the other serious sellers that I know seem to be guided by. Have you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's great. Uh, we, we look at stuff like that. And we also look at um, what we call the true ACOS, which is a, a look at your overall ad spend relative to your organic sales and PPC sales, right? So if that number is like 20, 30%, that means that's really biting and eating into your profit margins. If it's around 10%, then that's cool because it's biting into your profit margins like just 10%. And mm. you're left with 20, 25, 30% of profit margins 
well, that's great because you're selling more products. So we yeah. look at through ACOS as well as some of those other metrics. Actually. Yeah, I mean, I think that's more or less the same thing I was referring to, really. I mean, it's yeah. one of the problems with this is just finding some uh, name for the metric that people agree on, but I think it's more or less the same thing. And, okay. and also 10% cool. is a figure that, that people seem to be coming up with as well as a maximum. So again, that ties in with what other people are saying. So um, yeah, it sounds like a, a great metric. And, and I'm very excited about the headline ads thing. I, I do think that you've just helped to break it down in a really, really usable, helpful way for new people. So that's amazing. Um, any other thoughts? So I know we, we've got another segment coming up where we're going to talk about off Amazon ads. Have you got any other thoughts around best practices for Amazon sponsored ads or Amazon headline ads or any other on Amazon advertising generally? All right. So a, a couple of other things is bid prices. If you look at bid prices, um, you want to make sure that you have a good bid price. If it's, if it's a keyword that's working really, really well, then you can uncap that and try to get more impressions. That's what we've been doing. But if it's a keyword that is like sort of um, above your, your threshold of what you consider successful, then start to look at those keywords and lower your bid price. Now, we have a tool called Ubid inside of Entourage that does that for you. But you want to make sure that it's a, it's a, it's a win-win proposition, right? Um, it, I, even, I think of it as like a show deal or no deal. Uh, it's either gotta, it's gotta be either a, a good deal or it's going to be no deal for me. Um, especially because I'm going after so many keywords and I want to make sure that I laser to focus my ad spend on what's really working. So if it's sort of not working and it's sort of starting to drain my bank account, I will actually lower those keyword bid prices to align with what I do consider, um, uh, a deal. So that's something you can take forward with you is to manage your bid prices on a routine basis. And don't just like set it to the highest level because Amazon will drain your bank account and you'll end up with less money towards what's actually working. Yeah, that makes total sense. And the thing is that sometimes people, um, I think it's the same with Google ads, I, in my experience, worse. Um, that they're basically always going to encourage you to spend money because that's where Amazon's oh. the most profitable division of the Amazon retail division, apart from uh, the AWS stuff, which I think is also very profitable. That, that makes them a lot of money. So yeah, just because Amazon's keen for you to do it don't mean you should do it, right? Yeah, well, a little tip on that. If Amazon emails you and says, hey, you know, we have this um, way that you can optimize your ads, you can upload this file, and we will automatic, automatically change your bids, Please, I'm going to save you guys a lot of money and frustration. Please don't do that. Like, please, please, please don't do that because they have this different interests, I believe, than we do. They want to, like you said, make more money and be profitable on their end. It doesn't always align with our goals. I did it and I lost a lot of money. And I know other sellers who have as well. Um, so just be very mindful of that. And also Amazon also sends out emails a couple of weeks before major um, events like Prime Day and everything to raise your bid prices. Uh, now everyone is going to raise their bid prices and things become more aggressive and more expensive. So little tip is I don't, I don't do that either. Um, we do sometimes raise our budgets, but also if you do do that, go back after the holiday and lower your bid prices. A little tip there as well. Yeah. So maybe expand the budget. So you, um, allow for more clicks, but you don't want to pay, increase the bid per click any more than, right. than you really have to. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. The thing is that in my experience as well, like working with another, um, Fella recently, fantastic at branding. I mean, and wonderful products. But his Amazon ad spend was just way out of control. And I think it happens so easily because Amazon makes it easy. So yeah, I think that's an excellent warning on those two seductive offers. So tell us a bit more. You've, you've already hinted at a couple of very useful things that PPC Entourage does. So tell us a little bit more about the other tools you've got, things that will automatically manage bidding. What other things can PPC Entourage do? Because I'm, I'm absolutely one with the idea of getting rid of spreadsheets from our lives as much as we can and using a tool in this area because it does make your head throb. Um, so how can you rescue us from that? All right. So it's pretty much broken up into two main categories, PP expansion, and we have something called Power PPC that does that. And that helps you do everything we spoke about before, where you dive into the search term reports, you find what's working, what's connecting, and then you use those search terms to expand into other match types um, into, and into other campaigns. Everything is synchronized with Amazon. So basically you would go into Power PPC, you would go into search term expansion, find those search terms, and then create campaigns right from PPC Entourage. So there's no more spreadsheets. You simply type in your target ACOS and you find all of the relevant information, click on the relevant search terms, create a campaign, boom, you're done. You can train your VA to do the same thing. Match type expansion is very similar. You find the winning keywords, and you find out which match type they're in, then you automat our system automatically finds those, uh, those match types and then 
tells you wh where to expand into other match types in one module. So there's various things with Power PPC to help you expand. We have a couple other things. What I'm really excited about is campaign optimization. Campaign optimization, there's three main ways to use a system to optimize. One, we have bulk edit. Now, I told you guys before that I followed Amazon's advice to update all of my keywords and our PPC went out of control. The, but the, the great thing that came from that was PPC Entourage bulk edit. So learn from my mistake and now utilize this tool because bulk edit will allow you to make mass changes uh, you know, all across all of your campaigns all at once. So you can, for example, find all the SKUs across all of your campaigns, across all of your ad groups that are, that are underperforming based on an ACOS target. So let's say you type, type in an ACOS of like 60 plus, you can then go across hundreds of campaigns and find all of the SKUs that are hidden in some ad groups that are underperforming and pause them and direct traffic in the right way. So I look at bulk edit as a way to be like a traffic, air traffic controller. You're just directing traffic to what is working. And then we have that for keyword optimization, which is awesome because you can optimize and look at your campaign from a keyword level. Well, which keywords are converting well, find the ones that aren't performing well and pause those. Find the ones that are performing really well and cap up, raise up your bid prices. But you can do this all now in a matter of seconds, like 30 to 50 seconds and just find the stuff. Did the same thing for search term optimization as well. So um, that's my favorite tool inside of campaign optimization. But we also have an autopilot mode where if you know what you're doing, you can actually set up a lot of this stuff automatically and then revisit it every three to four weeks. We do not suggest setting it and forgetting it. We, su we suggest going in there, putting in the recommendations, and there's a lot of recommendations, including A-B split testing that just came out today. Um, you can, and also day parting, we have that as well. You can go in there and set these things up and then uh, come back a couple weeks later and see how they're performing. And with an A-B split test, you can see if it's performing better or worse. So that's a, a entourage in a nutshell. But once again, we have the blueprint and we have the fundamentals course that will sort of guide you through the best practices on how to leverage PPC and sponsor products. That's fantastic. I mean, it does sound very attractive. I have to say the, um, the idea of, of having control, but only what's the word, the implementation of a strategy shouldn't be where you focus on. I guess it should be setting a strategy and then the nuts and bolts of it, you either want to outsource or even better automate. And it sounds like, you know, being able to say, right, an ACOS above X percent is unacceptable, which sounds like a, a stranded sort of business strategy thing. To actually just be able to go click, click and done makes a lot of sense to me because otherwise you do spend hours of your life with spreadsheets in my personal experience. So the three ways it's split up is the bulk edit, the keyword optimization and the autopilot feature. Is that right? Oh, actually, so we uh, in the blueprint, we have, there's five ways to really optimize a campaign. Okay. So in the blueprint, we tell you those five ways. And then in order to, you can use it, you can optimize in bulk using those strategies, using the bulk edit. You can use the autopilot to use those strategies, or you can click on each individual campaign. And once you do that, you'll have a campaign dashboard with five tabs that follow the uh, blueprint. And it's just strategy after strategy after strategy. Each tab is a strategy. Okay. So that's, yeah, that's the way. And the way we see that is you want to um, optimize in bulk, get rid of the, the junk across your campaigns all at once. Then you dive into each individual campaign and you do a little fine tuning and pick out the weeds. And then if you're comfortable, you set on the autopilot and then you come back every three weeks to see what's working and what's not working. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, I think one of the things that strikes me about this is that actually whether or not you use the tool, and this is one of the interesting things, is you baked a very uh, very clear-minded strategy into a, a tool, but the strategy is actually, to some extent, what matters, right? So get rid of the junk across the piece, fine-tune each campaign, set autopilot, then see what's working, what's not. Even if you used a VA instead of uh, software, I guess you could apply the exact same strategy, right? Right, and that's why we have the, uh, the, the blueprint. You can use that with the tool or without the tool, but the strategy has been very helpful for us. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, that, and that's fantastic to hear because whether or not people actually want to uh, subscribe to the, uh, the tool itself, PPC Entourage, I think that blue tip blueprint sounds like um, a very rational approach to you know, a sometimes just data overload area, as you say, paralysis analysis. So that's fantastic stuff. So let's wrap up the on Amazon um, segment there because I think that that's a nice, clean and clear approach. Thank you so much for a lot of great insights. I'm, I'm now kicking myself that I haven't been using headline ads uh, since they became available on Seller Central because they sound really, really cool. So I'm definitely going to be implementing that soon. And um, just remains for me to say thank you very much for this one and look forward to our next talk. Thanks, Michael. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to it and talk to you guys soon. Cheers.